This one is another kind of similar question um, regarding the random architecture and planning history questions. Is there any suggestion on uh, how to deal with those? Like, what, what do you study and what do you focus on? Um, my suggestion on the history and the planning history questions, the architecture history and planning history questions, um, is that you just get some very simple, straightforward, uh, uh, you know, you, you probably have one sitting around from an architecture history class, uh, but just a simple textbook. Um, uh, there's a, a bunch of uh, any of the, the sources, um, the ballast and the Kaplan's and, and those sorts of things have a lot of sort of very simple and straightforward sources. Um, we have some on some of our uh, um, uh, videos um, that talk about these, these issues. Um, the, that what you want to, to figure out is, like they're not gonna ask you general questions about architecture history or planning history uh, that are just things that, that you would need to have, like have to know, right? They're gonna ask you questions that are specific to the exam topic. So like nobody cares um, if you know, uh, what would be a good example? Um, uh, the year that Mies van der Rohe died, you know, like doesn't matter. But you should know that Mies van der Rohe focused on steel structures. Like you can very quickly and clearly identify him in a very particular way. So that if there's a history question in while you're taking the structures exam and the, the question includes uh, Mies or includes steel and Mies is one of the answers, well, he's sort of iconic and representative of steel. He's probably the answer, right? Uh, if you're talking about concrete, it might be uh, Calatrava or Nervi or somebody along those lines. Um, so what you're looking for when you're doing the studying, you don't need to study everything. You're looking for the iconic ones that are easy to ask a question about. They do, they're not trying to figure out if you are potentially an architectural historian. They actually don't care about that. What they do care about is that you have some idea of the kind of these main turning points where specific per people or specific planning concepts uh, happened in order to uh, that, that those, because those were kind of turning points in how we think of the kind of precedence in architecture. So from a planning standpoint, a couple of the ones that jump to mind are things like the Garden City movement uh, that came from out of the UK uh, around the turn of the last century. Uh, um, the new urbanist stuff that came sort of uh, to fore in the 80s and 90s uh, here in the States and spread around. Um, these are kind of turning point elements that uh, kind of captured a, an imagination. Um, those are kind of key and important to be able to respond to, but the questions won't be complicated. They, quite, they shouldn't be, at least. Um, they, what the questions should be based on is just sort of that you understand that as a precedent, that you understand that this was a, a key moment in time where this thing happened. Um, uh, and then there's some uh, kind of deeper historical things, like you should understand the difference between uh, a Renaissance city and a medieval city, um, right? That there's sort of ran these patterns that aren't random, that they, they have to do with very specific moments in time. Nobody's really going to ask you, well, what year was you know, uh, uh, Venice laid out, anything like that. But you should understand the relationships of kind of big pictures of how those things go. So I would get one of those textbooks, but don't read it. <laughs> you know, just flip through, find the key spots, look for, for names that you recognize, read up a little bit about it, and just kind of move through um, and make sure you understand the key elements that bring you to uh, the to these like turning points. Um, uh, it's hard to think of one in wood, but uh, there's a few different. As I said, Mies. There's a few other uh, steel people. There's a couple of uh, concrete ones. There's uh, some a series of planning ones. Um, it, you might have some some kind of modernist things. They will talk about how uh, modernist planning versus uh, uh, traditional planning. Um, you know, it'll only be ones that really sort of captured a moment in time, uh, and that's what you're really focusing on. So I wouldn't fret about it. The way the history questions got in there is in the old days, there was an actual history exam. It was actually a whole separate exam, and you had to take a whole exam on architecture history. 
And then I, my guess is that people kept failing it, and so they decided to uh, uh, to get rid of that, and they just spread the the questions uh, about through all the other exams. So the exam, the history questions will be on topic to that exam. So um, it's like maybe you might have a like, kind of what would you have in systems? Um, in systems, you might have kind of a, a question about um, people using solar power or something like that. That you know, when did that happen? How did that happen? Um, in structures, as I talked about, people using specific materials. In, uh, in uh, programming, planning, and practice, it might be about kind of what are the precedents, um, you know, sort of, as I said, these different uh, systems for organizing, like uh, medieval versus uh, uh, renaissance versus modernist. Um, like, how would that play, and how, what would those precedents be, and why might you choose those in any one situation? So it'll always be specific to that exam, but it, it could be about any of those uh, different people, but it won't be completely random, it won't be um, uh, unknowable. It's, it's something you can actually study for fairly simply. I would spend maybe two days on it and then you're probably good to go. Today's ARE Live episode is an extension of our online ARE curriculum that you can find on blackspectacles.com, the home of online learning for architecture and design. If you need to prepare for the ARE, which I assume many of you guys do, and if you're looking for a good way to study for the exam that's more flexible and easier to digest than the traditional exam prep materials, then head over to blackspectacles.com to try out any of our free ARE video tutorials that are taught by tonight's presenter, Mike Newman, and that are built in collaboration with AIA Chicago. As an attendee, and as you can see here on the screen here, we have a couple of notes or information for today's episode. Anyone who is attending today's session, you're eligible to use this coupon code worth 15% off the first charge on your individual membership. If you're one of those folks who would like for your firm to purchase Black Spectacles access for you and your colleagues, just visit blackspectacles.com business, which is this fourth link here, and we'll send all the information for your firm to get set up. And also from now until the 15th of next month, firm memberships are 15% off if you mention this episode when you submit your form through blackspectacles.com. Also on this, you'll see that our next webinar will be on May 27th with Mike at 6 o'clock. So if you'd like to register for it, here's the registration link. We're still firming up the details and the actual topic. So if you have any suggestions and would like Mike to cover a specific topic or would like us to interview someone in particular about a specific topic, please let us know. 